on the way to the House of Mirrors. We pass through the excited crowds and inviting stalls. The warmth that captured the carnival seeps away as we draw closer to the House of Mirrors. No one is entering the attraction. People don't seem to notice it at all as they pass by. Their attention is drawn by brighter attractions like moths to flames. The monochrome colour of the tent seems to drown the colour out of anything surrounding it. Icy dew is frozen at the tips of the once bright green grass, creating a carpet of white around the tent. We draw to a stop in front. The shiver it inspired in me earlier returns, so I grit my teeth to keep it from showing. Brass stares over it to the very top. Oh, this is cheerful. I give a heavy sigh as I look over it too. Bra places the unicorn toy prize on a chair outside of the tent, and with a final nod at each other, we step forward and enter through the foreboding darkness of the entrance. No, not the toy. The moment we step inside of the grey strapped tent, a stream of mist hisses from the centre of the large space and instantly encases everything. I barely have time to glance over the silver reflective material that makes up the inside of the tent before the fog clocks my every sense. I have to squint through it just to see Farrar beside me. You'll stay with me through this, right? She asks, giving a chuckle that sounds as strained as her tight smile looks. I give a nod and then step into the grey plumes. The clouds are bitter against my tongue. They suffocate me in their thickness until my ribs are barely moving in order to avoid breathing them in. Any areas clear of fog are crowded with mirrors. Not the usual tall, plain kind that line the sides of these attractions. Instead, there are a wide, where, a wide Variety. Some framed in ornate gilt are hanging from the ceiling by wires. Others, round with twisting silver frames, are leaning against the sides. And there are even more I can't get a true look at. They all stand like soldiers around us as the mist seeps in front of my view. In fact, it engulfs me so thickly that when I turn to look for Farah, she's gone. Farah? My voice seems to be trapped in the fog. Shit. Farah calls after a moment, though her voice is faint. She's apparently already much farther away from me than I thought she'd be. My feet tangle in the mist, but I force myself forward. Where are you? Swimming through the fog, Bra quips. You? No idea, I frown. Better make it to the exit. We'll never get anything done like this. All right, but if I die choked by fog, you have to tell everyone I look damn heroic doing it. Putting the plan in motion, I shuffle forward, trekking through the thickening clouds. Progress is slow. Wading through the fog is like trying to walk through water that constantly wants to drag you into the unknown depths below. A faint haze of lights trails through the mist, so all I can really do is follow it in the hopes it will lead me out. My heart fuds a relief-filled beat with every safe step I take. Something flits in a mirror nearby and my stomach lurches. I swing around only to find it's just my reflection, staring back at me wide-eyed through a fancy-framed standing mirror. As I look away, the image shifts with my own movement, I assume, but on looking back, I finally see Farah sauntering out of the mist-drenched darkness towards me. I reach out a hand. The image dissolves in my grasp. Once again, I'm left staring at my own reflection. I swallow down the fear, beginning to claw its way up my throat. Wait, please. I whip around as the soft echo of a pained voice beats through the cloudy shadows. A familiar voice. Farah! Alright, that's enough of this. Hmm. I mean, those are all, those are all solid options. I don't want that. I, I don't want that. One, three, and four. Hmm. Yeah, look for a way to see the layout of the tent. Seems, I mean, following the flow of the fog seems logical as well, but I like the layout idea more. This place isn't a house, it's a labyrinth. One I'll never find my way through unless I can see the layout. As I let out the breath, the fog in front of me whirls in the air and rises. My gaze follows it, and on glancing up, I let out a smile. The reflective material that coats the inside of the tent extends all the way up to the ceiling, and gives me a clear view of every path the mirrors make. With renewed purpose, I start forward, keeping my steps steady and my focus trained on the ceiling. After what feels like an hour, but is more like a minute, I stumble out of the maze and find myself in a clearing. Mirrors cage the area entirely, reflections flashing and flickering across each surface. But it takes my stunned mind a moment to realize that the reflections aren't of me or anything else in the area. My gaze darts to Farah. She's on her knees in the very center of the circle, face paralyzed and mouth agape. Regret and fear make her amber eyes blaze. Farah? 
but my voice rings hollow against her statue-like figure. A sudden chorus of yells makes me flinch, and I turn to look at what has crippled her. The mirror is acting more like a movie screen. My eyes gradually adjust to the darting movements and the shifting scenes. Bright blue-white light sparks behind the surface. I flinch against the brightness which almost blinds me. Another round of shouting pounds against my senses. And then I see Farah, or at least a version of her. She's dressed in a simple outfit of cottons and hides, nothing like I've ever seen her wear before, or would imagine she'd want to wear. The clothing is torn and ripped, barely attached to her body. It snags on a bush as she sprints through a dense forest. But this is unlike any forest I've ever seen. The trees are stained with blue, their dark leaves seeming to glow and their colored trunks soaring out of view of the mirror's height. A group of silhouettes stalk out of the trees behind her. Another flash of white light zooms towards the mirror. The image shifts. I have to blink my eyes rapidly to keep up. A new figure appears beside Farah. A frown catches me as the two look similar, but this new woman is older and has a crown of silver dreads hanging about her round face. The acrid smell of burnt flesh hits my nostrils, but I remain glued in place. The woman grabs Farah in an embrace. Run, Tida! Keep running! Don't look back for me! And then she shoves Farah away from her. There's a soft cry. It's enough to break my trapped gaze away from the mirror. I turn to see that tears are streaking down Farah's cheeks, though she still seems to be stuck in place. The glow of the white light fizzling behind the mirror burns over her skin before the illumination is gone. Shadows swallow the room once again. A voice whispers from the mirror, and my heart jumps as though it had stopped completely. Your judgment has been cast. A hand reaches out from the mirror, making me stumble back in sudden shock, but it's not grasping for me. Its reach extends from the surface towards Farah, the skin of it as grey-white as the mist that surrounds it. It pauses. Guilty. It snaps forward. Um... Screw it. Shoot it. At a dash, I spring forward while whipping my gun from the holster, but my body freezes as I stare at the mirror and the man seemingly inside of it. He snaps his hand back, the black talons at the end of each of his fingers curling into a fist. He stares at me with just as much confusion, his white brows barely visible against such pale skin. Seeking, uh, sink into a drown... Jesus Christ. Sink into a deep frown which settles over hawk-like eyes. A hollow circle of yellow is all that sits in an otherwise completely black eye. The man flicks his focus to Farah once again, his long straight strands of stark white hair shaved into a crest over his scalp, shift to reveal short pointed ears. And this time I don't hesitate. Aiming the gun straight ahead, I squeeze the trigger. There's a shocked yell before the mirror smashes into large shreds of silver and glass. I curl my arms up to shield my face from the explosion, wincing as small pieces scratch at exposed skin. The room once more settles into quiet, and then a ragged breath sounds from behind me. I spin around to see Farah remains frozen and silent, staring ahead into nothingness. Hmm. Sure. Farah! I yell, dropping down to kneel directly in front of her. My hands move to grasp her shoulders as I try to shake her out of the trance. Farah! For a while, there's no response at all. Please. I whisper, concerned, strangling my voice. I'm unsure what to do. Farah! She gasps for air. I sag with a sigh. Finally. My hands soften their grip but remain on her. I wasn't sure if he'd ever come out of it. Jules? She asks with a frown. Yeah, I reply with a nod. It's me. Suddenly I'm engulfed in a warm embrace as Farah throws her arms around me. I, I thought... Her voice chokes, so she buries her face in my shoulder. I roll my lips together to stop the emotions from welling up too much in my own voice. It's all right. You're safe. Can we just get out of here? She croaks. I nod, then pull away and get to my feet in order to help Farah onto her own. We don't waste any time in heading out of the tent and towards a streak of sunlight that creeps its way inside through a gap in the material. Farah doesn't look back once as we go. In a tent at the far end of the carnival. Ah! A burst of glass shatters out of the mirror in a lone tent on the other side of the carnival. The explosion is followed by a pale man stepping out, his face tight with fury. The restricting space of the tent is cast in deep shadow. 
The musty scent lingers in the stale atmosphere, the heavy material of the tent not allowing daylight or air within its confines. The figure paces across the wooden floor, dried mud and stone kicked up by his flurried pace, before he draws to a stop in front of a portrait-length mirror hanging from vines twined around the beam of the ceiling. Where there should be a reflection, the surface of the mirror is dull, with grey cloud and dust stirring behind the glass. Mida? The man cries, clenching his, ha his hands into fists and letting out a huff of annoyance. A rustle of sound shifts behind, shifts behind him, and his black-eyed gaze snaps around to see who, is dis who has dared to disturb his solitude. Warmth rushes into the tent the moment the woman enters. Sanja, the man greets her, letting out his ira in a long breath. She smiles at him, the sharp contours of her face and Topaz's eyes soften slightly with emotion. Having difficulty? He fins his pale lips. You know of what happened? She nods, the unkempt waves of coffee brown hair shifting over her shoulders and coming to settle over the ragged clothing she wears. I cannot find them. He thrusts a hand at the mirror in accusation. I could not either once I found out about them through your upcoming fates. It would seem they cannot be read or followed. The teller continues. Something protects them from our view. Even from you? The man leans back, staring down his long nose at her. That's impossible. And yet it would appear to be the truth. She pauses as a solemn weight descends over the space, knowing what she must ask next. What do you wish to do about them? The man straightens and shakes his head, long, thick strands of white hair shifting in front of his eyes as he does. The human had a vampire with them, their business may not conflict with ours. He glances back to the mirror. Still, I will ensure it doesn't. Sandra nods. As you wish, but in the meantime. She steps forward, catching the man's attention and offering him something. This may be of use to you. The man grasps the thin object and brings it closer to his limited view. It seems to be a captured image. Ah, god damn it. Two people smiling at each other with the carnival blurred in the background. You may not be able to connect to their mind, Sandra explains, but they touch this. A physical tie can be found instead. The man's creased scowl lifts into a pleased expression. Aita? You're welcome. Tella replies, leaving the tent in a waft of apple scent. As soon as she goes, the tent is once more drenched in chill and darkness. The man swings around to face the mirror, grips the photo and stares into the glass. The grey clouds whirl and fight against each other in the oval space until finally they part to reveal the human he had just confronted. Ah, his smile lengthens. There you are. Next chapter.